Hey everyone, I'm Rob from Adagen, and I'm here to teach you a bit about our new plugin, Morphogenesis. Morphogenesis is a stable reaction diffusion system with dynamic perturbation of the simulation surface. What this means is we can achieve a variety of natural, evolving textures, temporal smears, and other interesting effects in a safe way using a set of intuitive parameters. So let's go. We need a source to kick things off, so we've dropped in this preset from the Metaballs generator. And now we're just going to add Morphogenesis. As you can see, the initial settings are targeted at getting things up and running quite quickly. But I am going to tone it down and start from the start here. So, the most important controls in Morphogenesis are these top four. Input amount, persistence, softness and aggression. Input amount controls how much of what comes before Morphogenesis is fed into the plug-in process. Persistence controls how long that input stays in the buffer. Softness and aggression are a little bit more abstract and do have some interaction with persistence, but I'll try and explain in a way that will make sense. Okay, so softness smooths out our overall process, as you can kind of see. It creates a, a shadowy, ethereal kind of feel to the thing, and it's probably what you want if you want these nice sort of diffused motion trails. Aggression counterbalances softness and generates probably the most important part of the reaction diffusion process. So let's turn up our aggression and see what our nice soft motion trails turn into. All right, now we're starting to see the process at work. Very nice. So the input amount is important because it arguably controls how much space morphogenesis has to fill. You can see this is very minimal content and generally minimal content is ideal because we are going to fill as you can see when I did that a lot of space very quickly can be filled um, with this process so it's, it's not necessary to have maximalist content and it's probably ideal if you get out of the mindset of sort of using it as an overlay effect this is almost a, a self-contained process so once you have the, um, the input and the persistence amounts you want, generally um, softness and aggression are going to be what you want to tweak in order to get the most out of your process and probably the easiest direct creative control. You probably did notice before when I did this, you can see there's some colorful blooms forming. This is part of the process and hopefully it spices it up a little for you, but if you're not a fan, feel free to turn up the mono amount knob and you can see this will gradually apply a monochromatism to the image to keep it a nice black and white which is fine for processing this RGB is also quite nice for processing if you remap the colors later on for example it can, it can get quite quite interesting you're probably noticing here of course that our system has this tendency to resolve itself this is totally appropriate to the process and fairly natural, but it's it's not, you know, not that great in motion. In fact, it has no motion. So we come to the motion controls. You can see here that the in-out control performs a constant zoom offset into the image. This is useful for clearing up a bit of real estate on our screen and um, allowing a bit more morphogenetic development. The rotation X and Y, likewise, perform a constant offset in much the way you would expect. Now, if you're looking at these thinking, wow, we actually have pretty much most of the components of a 3D movement, you would be absolutely correct. So as you can see here, by layering these in different ways, you can get a quite interactive and perspective driven sort of landscape effect. And you have quite a bit of creative direction overall. So hopefully I've demonstrated to you a little bit of the creative potential that lies within morphogenesis. There are some other facets that other than just an effect. And that is that this works very well for transitions. Our persistent buffer, as you can see, it maintains itself between clip switches, provided they are the same resolution. And in fact, morphogenesis will even operate on its own without any input is completely freeform provided of course that you give it you know seated with something in the buffer to begin with and all you need to do to get rid of that is to drop the persistence or of course to keep it around 
All right. So I think that covers most of everything. The only other thing here is the wrap edges button. So you can see right now this rotation is actually wrapping itself back across these axes, which gives us a sort of uh, infinite toroidal space in which to perform our simulation. Perhaps you don't want this, perhaps you want something that seems a little more in and of itself and appreciating that we can of course turn wrap edges off and we will simply sort of streak out which again provides a fantastic opportunity for morphogenesis to uh, do its thing as you can see here. Alright that's just about everything for now and there you have it morphogenesis. You can try it out on juice bar right now and we hope it finds a place in your toolkit and your heart. Signing off this is Rob from Adigen.